morning, everyone. I'm Dan Andrews speaking to you from the Ezra Global Monitoring Division's Barrow Observatory in Barrow, Alaska. It's been said that the Arctic is the mirror to the world. Climate change will be seen first and to the greatest extent in the Arctic, and whatever changes are seen here will eventually happen to the rest of the world. So the Arctic is an incredibly critical place to make the measurements that we do here. One of the keystone programs at the observatory is the CO2 program. The CO2 program runs continuous, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And what we're looking at here is data for about the past week in Barrow. The ups and downs we see here are due to changes in wind direction. One of our major problems is that water vapor is an incredibly strong greenhouse gas that will affect our measurements of CO2. To try to take care of this problem, we run the air sample through a freezer trap and freeze all the moisture out of the samples so that we can compare from around the world CO2 in dry air. Perhaps the most widely known and respected data to come out of any project in the Arctic is the CO2 data. From the early 70s up through today, we see about a 1.2% increase. We are now looking at something on the order of 380 parts per million CO2 in Barrow. We see a wide variation over the course of a year in the CO2 data. This is due to the earth breathing. In the wintertime, plants go dormant and we see a rise in the CO2. In the summertime, they come alive and we see this drawdown. This is, this is unique to the northern hemisphere as 80% of the people live in the northern hemisphere and 70% of the land mass is in the northern hemisphere. So this is a picture of the biosphere coming to life every year. The second component to the CO2 program is the flask sampling network. This consists of a series of sites around the world that have agreed to take samples on a weekly basis for analysis in Boulder. There are three container ships that make cargo runs every week across the ocean and have agreed to take samples every 10 degrees of latitude. Here is Teresa preparing to collect a set of flasks. Two glass flasks are placed inside. This is known as the Max Sampler. It's portable, battery powered, can be used anywhere. The flasks are installed, connected in series. The system is tightened down so that the flasks don't bounce and, and break the tops off. And the entire unit is carried to your sampling location which in the case of Barrow is outside away from the building so that there are no contamination from the building or stagnant air. You there's a telescoping mast that runs about 12 feet up and the sample is collected through the tube. The system's turned on and the sample's collected. When the final chapter in the book on climate change is written, the title of that chapter will be Temperature. The one thing that everyone talks about is what is the temperature doing? CO2 is making the temperature rise in some areas. Other areas of the world will cool down. What this chart shows is that in the Arctic, summers are staying relatively the same, but winters are becoming milder by a tenth of a degree Celsius per year. When you first wake up in the morning and you're still half asleep, what are the first things you think about? You don't worry about what the latest sports score is or anything like that. The first thing you usually think about is what is it like outside? Is it hot? Is it cold? What am I going to have to wear? Thank you for joining us on this brief tour of the Point Barrow, Alaska Baseline Observatory, part of the Earth Systems Research Laboratory. We hope now to take you live to talk with Dan in person for a brief question and answer session.